This video is for Greg and Stephanie. It's to illustrate not only that the rackets are strung incorrectly, but how they're strung incorrectly. Um, this is the pink blade 104. If you look at the cross strings going this way, all of them are curved. This curvature shouldn't be there, but the fact that the curve is there is very telling because it, it indicates which direction the crosses were installed. We want to install the crosses from the top working our way down so that the pressure that's the racket uh, has to take on moves in the direction of the strongest portion of the racket, which is the yoke. If you install crosses from the bottom up, it creates the same pressure, but you're pushing all of that pressure in the direction where the racket is weakest at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Anytime you install crosses, they naturally want to curve. The uh, path of least resistance is that the, the cross strings will curve towards where there aren't any cross strings yet. So when you string the crosses from the top down, they naturally curve this way, and it's the job of the stringer to not leave that curve there, but to keep it straight as it's being tensioned. Because if you wait until the racket is complete, and then you try to go back and straighten these, sure, you can make them straight, but the slack is already trapped into the string bed. You can't eliminate the slack. But because they these crosses were not straightened and left in a curved pattern, I mean, you don't want them left that way anyway, but the fact that they're all curving towards the top of the racket tells you that these crosses were installed from the bottom towards the top, which is really bad. That's the pink 104. This is the green blade 104, and you can see that curvature is present in all the crosses as well. Uh, if it was just one or two, you might think, well, maybe the ball pushed it out of alignment or something like that. But because all of them are curving in the same direction, it indicates that, uh, that that's uh, almost guaranteed that these crosses were put in this way instead of this way. But that's not the uh, most uh, telling thing. The, and by the way, Greg's racket clearly was strung by someone different. You can see all the cross strings and the main strings are pretty darn straight. Uh, nothing really wrong with Greg's racket other than you won't be able to see in this light, I'm sure, but um, the strings where they were clamped have teeth marks from the clamps. In other words, the clamps were over-tightened. You may be able to pick up on that in the light or not. I have still images to show this as well. But you, if you look here as well as here, you'll see that the strings have been crushed because there are clamp marks. And you shouldn't see clamp marks. Uh, you don't need your clamps that tight at any rate. But the strings are running straight. Uh, they were not left curved and we are left to conclude that they were probably installed correctly from the top to the bottom. But there's no way to know uh, for sure since there's no curvature telling us one way or the other. Um, the knots are in the correct places, um, which is an issue on Stephanie's rackets. Let's go back to those. The pink blade 104, uh, besides the curve of the strings, we also have uh, something else to look at. It's um, more or less correct on the pink one and completely wrong on the green one. But let's look at how it should be versus how it shouldn't be first. Um, the Blade 104s, whether it's pink or green, due to the number of main strings and where those mains start, these main strings, the last main on the left side and the last main on the right side, will both be going... In this direction. So this is the final main on this side. This is the final main on this side. So therefore both of these strings exit the frame and get tied off near the throat. The mains on this racket, whether it's pink or green, never get tied off up here. They always get tied off at the throat. And again that's because this is an 18 main racket and her mains start at the head so they will finish at the throat. It's a binary thing. Uh, that's more for you, Greg. If you look at Greg's racket for a moment, Greg's racket, his mains start at the top 
as well. Um, but his mains finish here. And they get tied off at the top instead of the throat. That's because his has 16 mains instead of 18 mains. Uh, so both Stephanie's racket and Greg's racket both start here. But where they finish is slightly different. And that's based upon 16 mains versus 18 mains. So Greg's racket, the mains finish here and should be tied off here and here. And it is. And then, of course, your top cross is tied off near this end. The bottom cross is tied off near here. So Greg's racket should always have three knots at the top, a main, a main, one side or the other for the cross, and then only one knot will be down here wherever the bottom cross gets tied off. Back to Stephanie's racket. The pink one, you may not be able to see in this light, but suffice it to say, these mains do end at the throat and are tied off on their respective sides. There's one knot at the top for the top cross. There is one knot at the bottom for the bottom cross in addition to the two mains. So with Stephanie's racket, there should always, always be three knots at the throat, two of which were the mains that get tied off and the bottom cross. So that's one, two, three knots that will always be down here. And Stephanie's racket should always have only one, rack, one knot near the top. Whether it'll, it might be on this side, it might be on this side, but it's where this top cross gets tied off. So Stephanie's racket always has one knot here, three knots here. Greg's racket always has one knot at the throat, three knots at the top. That's how both of these rackets should be. But if we compare this pink blade to the green blade, something is very much wrong. Stephanie's green racket has three knots up here and only one knot down here, and it should be the other way around. And here's what happened. The knots are not tied off at the correct places, but without getting into the technical locations of the knots, just the fact that there's three here when there should only be one, and there's only one here when there should be three, means that something was not done correctly. And to quickly summarize what happened is the amount of... The length of string used to string the mains was not measured correctly, and therefore they didn't use enough string to do all of the mains on the left side and all of the mains on the right side. What happened was they had enough length to install all of the mains on the right side, so this main does go down, exit the frame, and get tied off right here where it should be. That side is correct. The left side is incorrect. There was only enough string for them to install eight, not all nine, of the strings on this side of the racket. Obviously, this racket has 18 mains, nine this side, nine this side. These nine were done and completed and tied off correctly. This side, only eight were done, and this last outer main was not installed. In other words, instead of this string coming down, finishing here and being tied off as it should be, there was only eight mains installed on the left side of the racket. So this eighth main here came up to the top and they tied that off. Then they did the crosses. So at that point in time, this racket, only, even though it's supposed to have 18 mains, only had 17 mains installed. And to make up for this, what they tried to do to cover their tracks is use the string that's for the crosses. They first didn't put here. So the end of this, you may not be able to tell, but all of these main strings are the same color and the same material. This one is not. This is actually the same color and material as all of the cross strings. So if you follow the routing on this racket, this string is tied off at the top. So they filled in the missing main on this left side of the racket, then turned this corner and installed this bottom cross this second from bottom cross and continued up the racket. That's why all these strings are curved. Again, these crosses were installed this way, but they had to fill in the missing main because they didn't properly measure the Luxalon or the poly. So all of these mains are poly except for this one. This one is, a, is the same multi-filament string that all the crosses consist of. So you have the correct knot for the mains finishing here 
the knot for the mains that should have been here isn't because this string never was installed. This was the last one on the left side, putting a knot here. So there's a knot for the main here and here. Then there's a knot anchoring this string. They filled in this main, then did all the crosses the wrong way from bottom to top and tied it off. So that leaves you with three knots. One here for that main, one here for this other main that turns into the crosses, and then also where the crosses finish. So you have three knots on one side that shouldn't, and only one knot at the other end. So it's, it's, a, it's a patch job at best. Um, also, the fact that there's the tie-off holes are bigger than the normal holes in the grommet system. So tying off strings where they aren't intended to be tied off means you're jamming a string through a hole that's designed for one string. Um, whether or not they did that with an awl or just brute force, don't know. But it's not good for the grommets either is what that amounts to. So these will be strung up correctly with the mains going in, then the crosses from the top to the bottom. Um, I think that's it. Um, basically, both the pink one and the green one have curved crosses, curving in the direction that indicates uh, the crosses were installed bottom up, and we want to do them always, always, always top down to preserve the integrity of the racket. Um, we also want to tie off the strings at the same locations, the correct locations, every time so that we're only making those particular locations conform to the knot because it does deform the grommets a little bit. There's no sense in doing that all kinds of different places each time you string the racket. If you put the knots in the exact same places in the exact same orientation all the time, it preserves the grommet system. Um, furthermore, if you, put the, if, the, if you put all the knots in the same places with the racket this way and the next time you string it, you mount the racket this way, and you think you're putting the knots in the same places, you're actually n not in the same location. So I always mount the racket the exact same way so that the knots truly are on the same, very same grommets in the correct tie-off spots uh, each and every time. Um, so this was butchered. Again, Greg's racket... Looks A-OK -okay as far as where they tied off and, and everything looks correct. Uh, presumably the crosses were done from top to bottom, although you can't know, uh, know for sure. Um, the only thing about this is... Oh, by the way, the, all, the only thing about Greg's racket is the uh, indentations where the clamps were way too tight to grip the string. And, and as you can see, it has crushed marks uh, all over the string. I'll actually save this string when I cut it out uh, and bring it to you because you, you, I'm guessing you, this won't show up on video. You won't be able to see these marks, but you will be in person. I took still images as well. But uh, oddly enough, these clamp marks from over, uh, clamps that are too tight are not present on Stephanie's racket. So that at least was done correctly in that they we're not using too much pressure to clamp all these strings. Um, but the rest of it's an atrocity. That's it.